hey hey so i love to bake that's my background i mean before computers and and uh, software industry i was in the baking uh restaurant environment in any case i actually do love making bread i find it really cathartic at the end of the day when i've got time to just get my hands into dough and knead it especially yeast bread we have a bread machine and we use that for our you know weekly bread that we use for toasting but for the fun stuff like for kasha or um cinnamon rolls or sweet bread or cheese bread or bagels and stuff like that i get it i love it so uh today i'm making shrimp pesto pasta and i thought oh i want to make some some italian bread At first i was thinking focaccia but eh, kind of mm, no so i'm just gonna make a, um, a bread to cook in the dutch oven so um going to start it. I got a cup of warm water. So I just took warm water and I zapped it for like 20 minutes around there. They usually say about 100, 110. Um, and I'm totally going off on my own with this. I mean, I've read a gazillion recipes, but this is, this is the one that I find works. Remember, we don't do salt here. Um, the other thing that we've been trying to cut down on is sugar. So I use a baking sugar alternative uh, from King Arthur. I really, really love King Arthur. Um, and I use this just for baking. So to my one cup of warm water, I'm adding a tablespoon of sugar. Now, most recipes will have you add your sugar to your dry ingredients, but sugar feeds yeast. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swirl that into my warm water, which is where my yeast is gonna go. And I'm gonna take two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast and put that in there. Now, this is equal to one packet of yeast. Yeah, I know I could have just got a teaspoon, but I really do like measuring it out in quarter teaspoons. I don't know why I get a kick out of doing that every time. So I got my nine scoops of quarter teaspoons of yeast. And I actually use uh, instant yeast, which doesn't need to be proofed, but it's just part of my regimen anyhow. So I have in here my one cup of warm water, my one tablespoon of sugar, quote unquote, <laughs> and now the yeast. So I'm just stirring that up using my ever faithful chopstick. Was not ever in my hair. <laughs> so I'm gonna set that aside. Then this takes about two and a half to three cups of bread flour. And I prefer to measure um, my bread flour than go by um, measure. I prefer to weigh my flour than use measurement. A typical uh, cup of flour is about 120. It really depends, 120, 120 grams. It really depends on the kind of flour. So for bread flour, um, and all-purpose flour, I usually go with 120 as my average weight, so right around there, depending on how wet my recipe is. So for this one, I'm gonna start with two and a half cups of bread flour. So that's 120, 120, 240, plus another half cup, that's 300 grams, which is what I have in here. So I'm gonna dump this into my KitchenAid. So ever since I started baking and uh, was a, prep cook at a pie company and then um, a baker at Marie Callender's and another pie company <laughs> and at uh, a baking company. Um, I've always, always, I fell in love with the Hobart from the first minute, I mean professional size Hobart, from the first minute I met it and uh, have, have wanted one ever since. Um, and never ever could justify spending the money on a KitchenAid. I envied people who had them and every time, every Christmas, I would see them go on sale and I'd be like, oh no, I couldn't, I couldn't justify it. I mean, I have a hand mixer. la di da to those people that have KitchenAids, whatever. I've gotten along this, I've gotten, fine, gotten along fine without one this far is what I kept telling myself, right? So a couple years ago, um, a girlfriend that I train with, um, who happens to be the cousin of a classmate, says, 
on one of our sunrise walks, hey, anybody need a KitchenAid? I got an extra one for my auntie. And I was just like, what? Giving away KitchenAids? Yeah, right here. And she looked at me and she said, oh my gosh, this is Terry Lynn's mom's KitchenAid. Terry Lynn is my classmate who is her cousin. So I have my high school classmates, one of my bestest, bestest friends, brilliant woman. Um, I have her mom's KitchenAid. I love it. it. I mean, it's an old cream colored KitchenAid, but she gets it done. And I remember eating stuff that her mom would make all the time and she would bring to school and share with us. And so I'm just completely tickled that that's what I have. Anyhow, total divergence. In my KitchenAid mixer bowl is just the flour for now. Now, this is where you can enhance it. Since I know I'm making this to go with an Italian dinner, I'm going to add a little bit of my pizza dough flavor. Uh, this is not pizza dough, but I'm going to add a little bit. So this is a tablespoon, right? I'm going to add a half a tablespoon. It just enhances the flavor. Might as well use it. You got it. Use it. Um, I'm also going to add Italian seasoning. Um, you could just use rosemary or oregano or thyme, whatever your favorite is, but I'm, I have uh, Italian seasoning, so I'm just going to use that. Perfect pinch Italian seasoning. I'm actually going to add a whole tablespoon, and it fits in my jaw. In there. Just to go with it. Yeah, okay, I'm going short of a tablespoon, so that was like, eh, just a little short. It just looks like overwhelming green specks. I don't really want that. So, so far, I've got a cup of warm water with a tablespoon of sugar-ish, my sugar, and two and a quarter cup, or two and a quarter teaspoons of instant yeast mixed in here to my KitchenAid bowl. I've got two and a half cups, actually 300 grams, of bread flour, and I added a half a tablespoon of pizza dough enhancing flavor, just for flavor flav, because I don't have salt, um, and Italian seasoning. And actually, I'm gonna confess, but don't tell John, I believe this has some salt in it. Shh. Um, actually, it's salt culture. It's got culture. Uh, and then I added some Italian seasoning. So about a half a tablespoon of the pizza dough enhancer and three fourths of a tablespoon or two teaspoons, if you will, of Italian seasoning. So I got my dough hook on. I'm just gonna swish these guys around for a little bit to mix up the seasoning and the dough enhancer with the flour. And it looks like my yeast mixture is bloomed a bit. You, I don't know if you can see that through, the, through there. I'm gonna show you before I dump it. Come here, peeps. So, Here's my yeast. See it's all bloomy and bubbly. Awesome. Here's my mixed up, oh, no wait, that's the head of the KitchenAid. Anyhow, that's the cream KitchenAid from Terry Lynn Hong's mom. So here's the mixed up dough. I'm just gonna drop it. There you go. And I'm gonna add my wet ingredients. Trying to get as much of that in there. Now, I'm just gonna lift my KitchenAid and let it do its thing and might have to scoop it down, you know, scrape it down a little bit here and there, um, and then let it do its kneading. Sometimes I like to knead it myself just because it's fun. So I'm gonna let that do its thing. Put you down here, talk to you all for a bit. I don't need my measuring spoon anymore. I'm gonna set that aside, but I'm going to keep my scraper because I'm going to need that to move things around. And I'm keeping my flour out because I will want to pull it out and do a little bit of hand kneading. So let's see how it's going. Looks like it's kind of stuck on the side. So I just bring my scoop in, my scraper in and flip, flip the dough about, if you will, kind of help it. Oh my gosh, if you could smell this. It smells like a pizza parlor. All that seasoning. Get it working. Really what I'm looking for is to see the uh, dough fully, in, the flour fully incorporated 
and see it begin to pull everything into that dough hook. That's what we're looking for, is for all of that dry stuff down there to become one, become one with the hook. Sorry for that loud noise. Um, so that's what we're looking for. I like to help it with the um, spatula just to get all that down there. But when I see it coming together like that, I know it's near, near it. And I can tell whether or not I need to add more flour. That looks like it needs a little bit more flour. So I'm gonna pause it. You can kind of see there how it's still stretchy and it's not um, pulling into a single ball yet. So at this point, I could pull it out and add my own, but because I've got it already there, I'm gonna add um, a scoop by scoop. So this is my bread flour scoop. Um, so I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time. They, they recommend adding about a quarter cup at a time. So I probably just added a little less than a quarter cup, but I'm gonna add that in and see what it does. It's like it's coming together. I love that when that happens down there at the bottom. And that's the sound you're look, listening for. That brushing sound means it's coming into its own ball. And it looks like it's gonna be dry, but you let it knead itself for a little bit. It'll start incorporating all that moisture throughout. Um, and it'll start grabbing all that lingering flour down there and building its own little, and that flap. You wanna hear that soft, um, like silk on, on corduroy sound, and then you wanna hear that flap, flap. That is perfect. The dough is come, coming together in a ball, wrapping around that hook. Loving it. So I'm gonna let it do that for a little bit, and then I'm gonna, hand knead it here, um, just so I can get me adjust ya. Actually, yeah, there you go. Um, just so that I can make sure that it's got the right moisture content. That's the other part I love about making my own breads is getting my hands in there and working it and feeling whether or not it's wet enough, dry, whatever. So as soon as I feel like it's done enough because this is really a no need dough so it's not something that i need to spend minutes and minutes sorry for that loud noise on but first i'm going to take my bread flour and lightly sprinkle some on my uh, board here and in my hands and actually i have i'm not on my counter although sometimes i have to confess i do use my counter after i clean it and i know it's super duper clean um but um this time I just got out a rolling mat that I like to use that um, helps, it's big enough that it keeps everything else on my counter clean. <laughs> what, you just got stuff on your counter? I know. We, um, every time we host a party, we clean the kitchen. That's just, you know, uh, one reason we have a party practically once a month so that we can do a good house cleaning. Um, and I love it because then the kitchen is sparkling and the counter is clean and the island is clean and it's just perfect. And then, you know, days go by and whatever, and suddenly I've got like piles of stuff on the counter and you're just like, uh-huh, things that should have a home don't have a home. So I'm dumping the dough out onto my floured surface. I usually use my hand, but you guys are watching, so I use the spatula. <laughs> okay, I've already floured my hands, so I'm just gonna rub it a little bit more on here, add a little bit more on top and run this guy around a little bit on my board. I don't know if you can see him. It's a pretty little loaf and actually feels really nice. It's a no knead dough, but I do like to feel it just to make sure that the moisture content in it is good. So I'm just pulling up and pressing down with my heel and moving it. So I'm constantly turning it just to make sure I don't get it stuck on the board somewhere. So I'm using one hand to shift it about 45 degrees, 90 degrees, whichever and my right hand, which is my dominant hand, I pick up with my fingers and then push down with my heel, uh, like that. And I can tell that it's nice and soft and it feels um, pliant, not too wet, not too dry. Sometimes when it's dry, you can see cracks um, in your dough, um, but this one feels nice and smooth. I mean, except for the speckles of the Italian seasoning and the, and the, the dough enhancing flavor. Um, 
it's actually a pretty smooth one, except I just crinkled it. <laughs> so now what you want to do is um, shape it into a, a round and just curl it around, make it, make it nice and happy, and then put it in a bowl to rise. Some people like to oil the bowl, which is what I'm going to do, lightly oil a little bowl and let this rise. Because it's got two and a quarter teaspoons of um, instant yeast and really just about three cups of flour, um, I'm going to let it only rise for an hour, maybe even less. At that point, I'm going to shape it into a little boule, um, preheat my oven. And while that oven preheats, which is like 15 minutes, that's my second rise and, and that's it. So I'm just going to find a bowl, lightly oil it, put this guy in there and let him sit for an hour. Now, where do you put it to sit? For my breads, I'd like to put it in a bowl and put it in my oven with the light on. So I put it in a bowl, put it in the oven, put a little wash, a clean washcloth or um, a kitchen towel over the bowl and just turn the light on. That's it. And I leave it in there to proof. Is that that light is usually enough heat to help it start to proof. Um, and, and it'll do wonderful things. Oh, look at how pretty it is. Yeah, happy little bread dough. Awesome. So I'll show you all what it looks like um, when it's done. But thanks for watching me bread. It's one of my favorite things to do. And thanks for listening to me. I'm sure this went on too long, 16 minutes already. But glad you were there for the show. Uh, now it's wine time, apparently. <laughs>